The campaigns are over and the first results from today's election are about to come in, what we'll be keeping a close eye on throughout the night. Our reporters are live with the Conway, Bevan and Curtis campaigns as the Commonwealth waits to find out who will be the next governor. It doesn't appear that the uh, car applied the brakes whatsoever. What we've learned about a deadly crash that killed one Eastern Kentucky University student. This is WQIT News at 6. And good evening. Glad you're watching tonight. The polls are now closing across much of Kentucky. So the waiting begins. The question is, one of the big questions, of course, who will be Kentucky's next governor? We are expecting the first returns shortly. We have crews with Democrat Jack Conway in Frankfort, Republican Matt Bevan in Louisville, and Independent Drew Curtis here in Lexington. But we begin with WKYT political editor Bill Bryant. He has a look at some of the key races that will be watching tonight. Good evening, Bill. Well, good evening. This is WKYT Election Headquarters, where we will be compiling the results all evening long. Now, here's what we'll be watching for tonight. Kentucky is electing its first new governor in eight years. He will replace term-limited Democrat Steve Bashir. The two frontrunners, Republican Matt Bevan and Democrat Jack Conway, differ on many issues. Bevan win and would change Kentucky's political landscape if he goes on to victory tonight. A Conway win would mean more continuity. We Will higher than expected but still modest turnout impact the results tonight? And next to the governor's race, the battle for attorney general between Andy Bashir, the governor's son, and Senator Whitney Westerfield. That was the nastiest of the races. Will incumbents, Secretary of State Allison Lundergan Grimes and Auditor Adam Edlin win re-election as the polls seem to indicate. There are also a handful of others statewide and a few local races on the ballot that will be following up as well tonight. As soon as the first results come in, You'll see them at the bottom of your screen, and we'll, of course, be back live. The latest numbers also on WKYT.com, along with our live coverage with our partners at the Lexington Herald Leader. On this historic evening, for now, Bill Bryant, WKYT. All right, Bill, we'll check back with you as those results come in. Now to the campaigns. Kentucky Attorney General Jack Conway hopes that voters will elect him to the state's highest office. And the Democrat says he has a good feeling about how things will turn out tonight. Kristen Kennedy continues our live team coverage from the Conway campaign in Louisville. Kristen? Amber, I'm here in Frankfurt, and the watch party is just getting started. People are just slowly starting to come into this room. This is where they will watch those results come in. This is where all Kentucky Democratic Party candidates and their supporters will be. We've been told the attorney general will address the crowd after his race is called. Conway said this morning he was feeling good about his campaign. He woke up calm and collected. He's running a campaign focused on job creation, improving education, and keeping policies the current governor, Steve Bashir, put in place. There's a lot of enthusiasm on our side. I think there's some really stark contrast in this election, particularly on issues of education and early childhood education and health care. Um, so this is a very, very important election. I mean, a governor uh, can do a lot for this state, and I, I intend to be that kind of governor. The attorney will be joined by other Democrats running tonight. Those we've spoken to so far are optimistic this is going to be a good year for the party. I'm seeing a lot of excitement. You know, Allison has done this before, and she's been crisscrossing the state. Adam Edelin and I have been crisscrossing the state. Jack had great turnout uh, at all of his events. I I'm looking forward to a good night for this ticket. And we will be here all night as well watching those results come in. For now, we're live in Frankfurt. Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. Kristen, thank you. As for Republican Matt Bevan, he said today he feels the momentum is on his side. The businessman has been running as an outsider. Phil Pendleton joins us live from the Bevan campaign in Louisville with the latest. Phil? Well, Amber, the grand ballroom here at the Galt House in downtown Louisville is where the Bevan campaign is hoping to have a grand celebration tonight. They will also be joined by many members of the state Republican Party. And this is the second major race for this candidate in two years. It's, it's certainly I mean, it's a different type of race. It's obviously a much closer race. Uh, it's one that has a different dynamic to it. Bevan spoke to reporters after casting his ballot in Louisville this morning. He was joined by his wife and his nine children in tow. He says he feels the campaign momentum has shifted in his favor, but he says it is ultimately in the hands of the voters. How many people come out from each side? Who can rally their base? Uh, and I do believe we'll win, but the voters will decide. It's been a tight race since May, but 
Kentucky's Republican Party chairman believes that is still the case even as the polls are closing. It's a jump ball. It's, it's anybody's ball game. Uh, you know, both campaigns have been going at it. I, I really think that uh, uh, Matt Bevin is in a good position. Both sides have spent a lot of money. Robertson says Bevin being outspent recently, but he says everything is even Stephen now. He says voter turnout is everything. You know, back in May, we saw a very close primary that was ultimately decided by 83 votes. And tonight, we may be in for a similar election. And we have seen some supporters come in. In fact, the celebration is already getting underway a little bit as people have uh, been waving some cowbells here in the last couple of minutes. Robertson says that it all comes down to who executed best down the stretch. We're going to be here all night bringing you live results as they come in. Live in Louisville, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. All right, Phil, thank you. Recent polls have shown independent candidate Drew Curtis trailing. But the creator of the news blog, FARC.com, says he feels his campaign will help other candidates in the future. Garrett Weimer continues our live team coverage with the Curtis campaign here in Lexington. Garrett? Independent candidate Drew Curtis has used social media to fuel his campaign for governor. In a column for Wired published online yesterday, Curtis says the Internet has made it possible for third-party candidates like him to win. I mean, basically, whatever I'm going to clock in, I did with nothing. So if you add that effort plus, you know, an actual, you know, honest to God political campaign, you can see some pretty big results. Curtis spoke to reporters after he cast his vote alongside his family in Versailles this morning. He's acknowledged that his chance of winning is, quote, probably slim, but he says there's value in his campaign bringing up topics that otherwise might not have been talked about, such as the pension system, tax reform, and restoring voting rights of felons. If nothing else happens other than that, that's going to be a huge boon to the state just by itself. And yeah, it's uh, being able to bring more complicated subjects to the table than people otherwise would have talked about. Regardless of what happens tonight, Curtis says he's leaving the door open to run for executive office again in the future. We were just talking yesterday about the things we've learned and uh, shortcuts in the process, and maybe dropping a few of those in would be the way to go. As because of social media, he's convinced you'll see more candidates like him in the future. And as for his future, we'll likely have a better idea of that soon. Live at Chase Brewing in Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Garrett, thank you. Stay with WKYT and WKYT.com throughout the night for complete election results. We'll have special coverage on WKYT from 7 until 8, and it will continue on WKYT.com after that. We'll also have insight from our news partners at the Lexington Herald Leader. Tonight, we are learning more about a crash in Richmond that police say killed one Eastern Kentucky University student and injured three others. It happened this morning along the Eastern Bypass, not far from the EKU campus. Police say a car carrying the students crashed into a cement truck. Monique Blair has the latest. At 7.26 Tuesday morning, Richmond police say a cement truck was stopped at a red light on the eastern bypass when a black car slammed into the back of the cement truck. Richmond police say the driver of that car died at the scene. One person was taken to Baptist Health and the other two people in the car were taken to UK Chandler Hospital. The driver of the cement truck was not hurt. Police say all four people in the black car were students at Eastern Kentucky University. The driver has been identified as 18-year-old Tyler Hughes, a freshman business major. It really scares me because you never know when it's like a friend of yours or something that you haven't seen in a couple of days or something or someone that you went to class with or just someone that you've seen in the past. And the bypass was shut down for two hours while accident reconstruction crews tried to figure out what happened. Police say it's possible the sun played a part in the crash. As you can see, the sun's very bright here. We don't know if that was a contributing factor in this or not. We're, we're investigating all different angles, uh, but it doesn't appear that the uh, car applied the brakes whatsoever. Some of you took to Facebook to describe what the sun was like for you this morning while driving in this area. Eric Adams says, the sunshine was so bad going up to Lancaster that I couldn't even tell I had a green light. And Kelsey Shoemaker says, I was about five minutes ahead of this and couldn't see anything because of how bright it was. In Richmond, it puts fear in your heart because you, you just never know. Monique Blair, WKYT.
Part of the eastern bypass was shut down for about two hours after the crash. Some great weather across the bluegrass on this election day with sunshine and warm temperatures. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has an early look. I was tempted to ask you if this was a record, but I take it it's not. It is not. Uh, 78, the record for the day in Lexington. A lot of those records across Kentucky today actually into the low 80s. So even into the first week of November, those temperatures can get a little toasty around here. Uh, but again, today we were on the toasty side. Right now we're cooling it down. A lot of upper 60s showing up into the bluegrass region. A little more in the way of some clouds southeast or Kentucky keeping those readings that are currently into the low 70s. Your Defender Radar Network, Southern Kentucky, with a little moisture coming on into town today. Moisture coming in from the southeast over the next few days. Now, it's not what you're seeing across the coastline where you've got a lot of rain there. It's just going to be a little bit of that creeping to the west of the Appalachian Mountains. That means more in the way of some clouds and the potential for a stray shower or two. We're going to keep the mild weather until we get into Friday. That's when a cold front blows into central and eastern Kentucky with showers and thunderstorms, of all things, here into early November. Guys, we'll track that when I come back in 10 minutes. Tonight, Scott County Habitat for Humanity is asking for help to replace a damaged truck. It was used to pick up large donated items to be sold in the Habitat for Humanity Restore. Two months ago, that truck was involved in a crash. Since then, Habitat has been using a secondary truck that's normally used for construction, but the organization hopes the community can help it raise the fifteen to twenty thousand dollars needed for a new truck. We're struggling to keep up the houses that we've got under construction and trying to replace this truck. A GoFundMe page has been set up to help Habitat for Humanity raise the money. We have a link on our website, WKYT.com.